about sharing. All right, you can hear me okay? Yes, we okay. hear you good, Greg, thank you. That's what happens when we unmute ourselves. <laughs> and your screen is sharing. All right, so um, thank you very much. My name is Greg McDonald. I'm a product manager on the Cognos Analytics team. And today, what I'd like to do is spend the next 30 to 40 minutes, uh, hopefully leave five minutes open for questions. But <clears throat> as a product manager, I often get carried away and talk too much. But I have put a stopwatch on myself so that I can try to stay within the allocated time. What I'd like to do today is spend just a few slides. I am, I am not a uh, cloud pack for data um, expert. Um, I know enough about the platform to be very dangerous. Um, I am a Cognos Analytics product manager, but one of my areas, is, of course, is deploying Cognos Analytics on Cloud Pack for Data. So what I'd like to do is start with uh, <clears throat> just a brief introduction. Again, a deep dive is something that we should, uh, you could reach out to me directly. My email address is at the end of this presentation and happy to do that, but that's a presentation unto itself. Um, so what I'd like to do is just Four or five slides, quick slides on what is Cloud Pack for Data, just to sort of set the stage. Um, then go into the most frequently asked questions immediately uh, with regards to Cognos Analytics deploying in Cloud Pack for Data and some of the value add. Uh, take a look at where we are today. Uh, take a look at the next release or two uh, with regards to some of the things we're looking at. And then, um, fly through some slides on um, provisioning an instance of Cognos Analytics and Cloud Pack for Data. And, and today those are gonna be slides, but then uh, jump over to a demo, uh, and just to give you a sense of what Cloud Pack for Data um, and, uh, and Cognos Analytics look like together, how they interact together, how you launch, because there's, there's often a, a lot of confusion um, uh, with regards to that. So uh, let's see if we can get this. Um, so yeah, again, at, at a high level, um, what is Cloud Pack for Data? Um, well, uh, I guess in short, um, it's a, a platform with a rich ecosystem of uh, um, modular data and AI services, Cognos being one of those uh, services. As an example, DB2, Data Stage, um, uh, Watson Knowledge Catalog, and we'll talk about some of these uh, uh, as we go through. But um, you know what? What Cloud Pack for Data does is provides um, simplicity, faster adaptability to change. Uh, and, and really with, with a significantly uh, reduced specialization of hard to find skills, right? When we talk about things that I just talked about, we're talking about databases, we're talking about data governance, we're talking about security. Um, and these are often hard to find skills. And, um, you know, we see our customers with a, 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 a mix of isolated tools. Um, and Cloud Pack for Data brings them all together in one common fa fabric of AI services. And the result is a unified experience, cost reduction from automation um, of manual uh, tasks and enforced data governance and, and security. And, and that's going to be a, a, a theme throughout, this, uh, throughout the next few slides. Now, um, use cases. So, um, these are the cases that are proven to be most popular uh, reasons why our customers want to work with us with this platform. Um, the first is Cloud Pack for Data's ease of use. Um, as you'll see in the demo uh, at the end, it's a very simple dashboard with all the services arranged by use case. In addition, uh, instead of managing, updating, integrating many different products to proximate a data and AI platform, having them all in one place um, makes things simple to manage um, and easier 
from a, a training and talent perspective, right? As to uh, managing many, uh, many, many applications in many locations on different operating systems, different levels of expertise, bring it all together in one. Um, uh, the second is, uh, of course, um, as many of you have probably heard in our IBM discussions, is uh, auto discovery of data. Uh, data scientists often spend most of their time finding data, right? That's what they do. Um, automating this process on the platform um, saves time and money and makes it a lot easier uh, and faster to send up a product pro uh, project um, that's very data specific, very data oriented, and of course. Um, this all lives on um, Red Hat OpenShift, which means um, that the applications can scale uh, to the exact size um, that you need when you need it. And then lastly is probably a topic near and dear to my heart as a product manager for Cognos is governance and security, which is a major focus of the Cloud Path for Data platform. Um, thing is there is no governance without data security and no data security without governance and having governance on the platform via Watson knowledge catalog, one of the premier data governance tools in the market and security, both through IBM guardian and red hat itself inside all this inside the same platform. Um, makes critical data privacy data privacy, sorry, and uh, regulatory challenges much easier to manage and uh second to last slide for cloud pack for data and most importantly um is that it has to work on any cloud red hat openshift um, is supported on all major clouds and as cloud pack for data runs on red hat openshift um it too runs on any um, public or private cloud. Um, you know, gone are the days of IBM saying, oh, well, you know, the IBM tool is only supported on IBM cloud. You can use any of the services deployed on Cloud Pack for Data on AWS, IBM, Azure, Google, um, and of course your own private cloud uh, or private infrastructure. Now, um, it's a build site that I'm going to walk through and this sort of, um, excuse me, this sort of walks us through um, the levels and the integration of, of cloud pack for data. And this is, this is actually my favorite slide. It's a nice overview of, of the complete platform. Um, and of course, as we just said, um, our approach starts with run anywhere, right? Uh, Red Hat OpenShift can be deployed on any of the, the public cloud providers we just talked about, IBM, Azure, um, OpenStack, and of course, on-premise, allowing it to de be deployed wherever you need it. Um, sorry. Then we have, <laughs> of course, uh, the way we support all this structures by layering uh, Red Hat OpenShift um, uh, on top, right? That goes on top of the, the platform of your choice. And this is the exact reason why um, IBM acquired Red Hat OpenShift in 2019. Um, wanted to provide the flexibility for you to scale across any infrastructure of any of the, uh, using the world's leading uh, open source um, uh, steward, which is of course, uh, Red Hat, uh, Red Hat Open Chef. And then um, we introduce the, the, the common layer. So this is the first layer of cloud pack for data. Um, and it's the integrated services that allow you to collect information and data from any repository, databases, data lakes, data warehouses. Um, our intention is for you to leave the data where it already resides. Our collect layer uh, introduces capabilities such as data virtualization. Again, that's a topic I'm going to talk about through this presentation today, um, and specifically data, data virtualization that allows you to fold multiple data sources, disparate data sources throughout your organization um, into one, into one view. 
this allows you to eliminate the need for some ETL work, and you can join uh, databases, data across multiple um, clouds in a logical manner. And then, of course, is our um, um, next layer of top after day, which is the organization. This is the security layer. Again, this is one near and dear to my heart, because once you have all this enterprise data collected, um, this is where we introduce uh, our industry leading data organization services that allow you to develop that enterprise data catalog, right? This is where uh, data governance is uh, strongest. And this is where Watson Knowledge Catalog uh, provides all the value for us um, in our uh, solution. And then lastly, um, we bring the function of data analysis as close to the customer, as close to the user you can with these uh, enterprise catalogs. Um, uh, at this top level are all the cartridges. Cognos Analytics is just one of these cartridges. We have, again, have Data Stage, DB2, um, uh, Watson Studio, uh, Data Virtualization. Um, all of these things can be brought on, brought in. They are deployed again on Cloud Path for Data on OpenShift, which means a full container strategy orchestrated by Kubernetes allowing us to scale these cartridges in the user loads based on uh, the resources that are needed by them at the time. Um, um, and, and of course, these are all plug and play. They're on one platform. And as you'll see in the demo, if I stop talking, is um, at the platform level is where you we introduce the security um, and the authentication so that as these cartridges are plugged in, as you need them and deploy and provision them, they're automatically integrated into the platform and with each other. So as your users, as your data scientists, perhaps go from Jupyter no uh, uh, Watson's you know, Jupyter Notebooks to Cognos Analytics to potentially ETL and um, outside ETL using data virtualization to bring all these data sources together, um, you have a seamless user experience. Um, so that's my overview of Cloud Pack for Data. Hopefully that was um, short and sweet and clear enough. Um, now I'd like to talk specifically about um, Cognos Analytics. And, and we won't spend too much time on this, but really this is, again, about modernizing the application, right? Um, with a containerized platform and a containerized architecture, um, we can meet your workloads by scaling in, scaling up, and scaling back again when the resources aren't needed so that they can again be used somewhere else. And, and on your monthly loads, your quarterly loads, your uh, um, annual loads, Cognos Analytics can be scaled up to meet those loads. And then life cycle. Um, again, during the slides later on in the provision, and you're going to see in, in a containerized world on Cloud Pack for Data, just how easy it is to deploy an instance on five nodes of or five servers of Cognos Analytics. And, and again, this goes right down to the upgrades, right? As we move into a container strategy, we have to look at upgrades completely differently than we do with our on-premise software, right? We need to be able to upgrade an application with zero downtime. And that's exactly where we're going. Um, if we look at the second column with regards to exclusive functionality, I've already talked about most of this, but I'll just highlight a couple. Again, um, data governance, right? When you're on the platform, you're integrated with Watson Knowledge Catalog, um, and you can have governed and ungoverned data sources, and these are all secured and can be made available to your users based on um, their role in your organization, right? Not everybody needs access to ungoverned data sources. And this eliminates the, you know, the paradigm we've been talking about for a hundred years of three people showing up at a meeting, all presenting the same analysis with different data and different results. Well, using governed data sources, that, that doesn't happen. And then the, the last one in this column is, is really, again, with regards to data virtualization. Data virtualization is a powerful, um, um, application service on the platform that allows you to bring these disparate data sources together to a common view that Cognos Analytics, dashboards, reportings, explorations um, can hit and report on. 
right? And and the data stays where it is. We're not sucking all the data and making an, yet another database. It it lives um, and stays where it is. And the data virtualization a service brings it into one view. Uh, again, that is governed by Watson um, uh, Watson Knowledge Catalog. And then of course, for your data scientists, we have Watson Studio deployed on Cloud Pack for Data, and our integration with Jupyter Notebooks. Um, the third column really is just talking about where we are today, right? We focused on the, the, the Pack for Data 4.0 release just went out at the end of June. And where we focused on Cognizant Analytics was really in the managed reporting workloads, right? Making sure that as much functionality as, as uh, the typical customer used uh, on premises available in this new deployment model. One thing I'll say right now is it's the same software. Right, Cognos Analytics installed traditionally on premise is the same software that's deployed in Cloud Pack for Data. It's deployed differently. It's containerized. We're re-architecting it, but it's the same software. The differences are in traditional installation versus uh, containerized deployment. Right, in a containerized world, modifying XML file files to change the behavior of the application isn't possible. It, it just it just doesn't work like that. Um, so um, these, this is the area that we're focused on. In the next five slides, will show you all the things that we felt were high value for our, our customers to move from on-prem to a Cloud Pack for Data deployment uh, modernization play um, would give you. And then again, our, our continued investment in integration with planning analytics as it comes onto the Cloud Pack for Data, data platform. Um, Watson Knowledge, Watson Studio, and Watson Knowledge Catalog. Again, we have continued investment in the integration with those, uh, with data lineage, the Watson Knowledge Catalog, for instance. And then configuration and capacity management is a huge one for us. We want a customer to be able to go through a capacity plan and say, I have this number of users, this number of reports, number of schedules, uh, number of dashboards, number of explorations, type of users. Uh, interactive versus batch reporting, scheduled reporting, how I'm delivering those reports. And at the end of that, we spit out a configuration and say, this is what you need. This is your min scale. This is your max scale. This is the value of a containerized platform. And so these are the things that we're looking at uh, for you in the future. Now, uh, just very quickly, um, this isn't a bad slide. This is just a slide explaining to customers that for a customer uh, uh, diving into the Cloud Pack for Data platform, looking at data governance, looking at data virtualization, looking at all these features. If you're an existing customer, then there's an opportunity there absolutely to move. As you can see from the third, third column, we have 11.1.7 .1 in Cloud Pack for Data today. Uh, very shortly, we'll have 11.2.0. So you'll have your choice of which one you want to deploy. When you deploy those, um, it is simply a deployment. It's a Cognos deployment. Again, same software. So a Cognos deployment, you're lifting up your application from on-premise and moving it into Cloud Pack for Data. So are there going to be, um, is there going to be effort? Sure, there, there are still things you have to consider. Dynamic query mode. You have to consider all the customizations you may have done in the past. However, on the far left is new workloads, new lines of business. Right, new opportunities in existing customers still exist. And the migration to Cloud Pack for Data can be all at once, or again, uh, it can be a journey. It can be, uh, okay, let's start with this line of business and let's look at the applications we have deployed and how they behave and do they run. And then on the far right, you know, there is going to be more, up, 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 more effort uh, when, when moving from Cognos 10, right? You're, you're, not only looking at a uh, dynamic query mode, but you're looking at the report upgrades themselves. Um, so very doable because again, you're simply upgrading the application uh, and you could do that in Cloud Pack for Data if you wanted to, but we'd strongly suggest you do that on-prem, create a deployment and move it over. Very simple. So when we talk about the capabilities, and again, this is, this is probably a larger conversation that we should all get together and have again with regards to um, what could potentially stop you from moving 
uh, to Cloud Platform Data for what you did today. And what I've done here, and these slides will be made available to you um, by the LP team, and, and these just focus on the high value things that customers want to do. And I'll just call out a couple in particular. Burst the file system. We've made that available via S3. Really powerful to a really powerful option. Very focused on cloud. But I still do have customers who say, look at, I still need to burst the file system, 10,000 reports. And I like to pick them up after they've been burst to the file system and do something else with them outside of cloud. Now, so we understand that, you know, we still need to get there. Uh, framework manager is there, auditing is there, all the audit packages, fonts, images, scheduled reports, uh, notification, yeah, so do email delivery. CA mobile, new and see with, um, and CA mobile existing uh, to mobile services, they will be coming soon. Uh, we just um, in the process of enabling those features. And then other ones, uh, MS Office integration, Trigger, uh, customers of significant investment in Trigger execution, SDK execution, certificate management, huge, and JDBC data sources, I'll lump these on in together. As a customer, you have to deploy JDBC uh, um, drivers across multiple report servers, application tiers, right? Some customers, maybe it's not so bad, they have three, four, five. Some customers have 70, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 report servers. And you've got to distribute JDBC drivers across all of these. Same with certificates. Certificates to secure connectivity, TLS connectivity, from Cognizant Analytics report server to your reporting server, right? In this new world that we live in, in this containerized cloud pack for data world, you upload these things once and we distribute them for you. So again, really exciting. Um, you have two deployment options. And again, um, I think I'm doing fairly well for time here. So um, you can, as you know, you, you potentially spend a lot of time and a lot of effort in your Cognos Analytics security, right? Your, your groups and roles, uh, your folder structure, and we have two options for this. When you move to Cloud Pack for Data, they have an authentication, we, we have on the platform an authentication service, right? And that authentication service is so important because again, we talk about the seamless integration of all of these applications and services that you're going to onboard onto the application, like data virtualization, data governance, again, data science, Cognos Analytics, DB2, whatever the case may be. And as a user moves amongst the functional components and services, we don't want them logging in again. Like you, we can't have that sort of, and when I, when I run a report from from Cognos Analytics or a dashboard and I'm accessing DB2 and it's on the same platform, I don't want to be prompted or database. I don't want to maintain sign-ons anymore. All this is integrated and that's why it's so important. However, moving from on-premise to Cloud Pack for Data, that's a consideration. Your two options are um, deploy the applications that you have without security, uh, re-secure them. I've had many conversations with customers that say, you know what? We've sort of overcomplicated our public folder structure. We've made it difficult on ourselves. So, you know, this is a great opportunity for us to look at it, how we've done it, simplify for us, reduce the number of groups and roles we have. Um, so, yes, we're going to approach it like that. And we do a deployment file and we resecure it and then we make it available to our users. And some customers say, well, that's a lot. Um, We've invested a lot. We like our structure. It's good. It's solid. We have external processes that, that use it. And for that customer, what we've done is we've engaged with a bunch of our partners, our IBM Lab Services, a few to start with, Tech Data, Modio, uh, Brightstar, sorry, Tech Data, Brightstar, Modio, and Attain Insight. These partners all have namespace migration tools, which allow you to go from one authentication source to another. Um, and we've enabled them by giving them, giving them access to Cloud Pack for Data um, publicly and allowed them to run their tools and validate that their service uh, work. So that's our strategy for uh, if you want to maintain the security you've built in Cognos Analytics on premise and move it to Cloud Pack for Data. Um, when we look at data analysts, you know, that data exploration, 
um, that the, what we just saw was primarily geared at a, a reporting um, a workload, and these now are more with regards to um, you know, a data explorer or a data analyst, and and with regards to manipulating um, uh, and viewing data and searching through data, maybe more of that ungoverned uh, data assets. And and as you can see. You know, they have access to everything it is they need, uh, framework manager models, uh, data sets, uh, data modules, uh, uploaded files, um, data virtualization, so that they can uh, do what they need to do. And, and in fact, these may be the same users that create new governed data sources. Um, but you can see for that typical workload, we're done. You know, your, your users can get on there and and bring their data, bring their assets from uh, a traditional on-prem to the new modern containerized version of Cognos Analytics and Cloud Factor Data and move forward. And the reason I say partially for Watson Studio and Watson Knowledge Cloud is because we're not done, right? We have data lineage, uh, so important to our, our Cognos Analytics customers. If we go back to the inf InfoSphere governance um, application, IBM inf InfoSphere governance, um, you know, so we still have work to do. We're not done, but we do have integration with the Watson Knowledge Cloud for governed data sources today. We're just not done yet. Um, okay, and then um, some things that I get excited about are upgrades. So we talked about lifecycle management. Uh, application lifecycle management is a in a containerized world is a very high value, right? You're, why are you modernizing? Well, I'm modernizing to take advantage of a containerized application that gives me um, uh, the ability to run a, a blue, blue green or canary upgrade where I can direct a group of users to a set of services that have been upgraded so that I can, I can test, I can begin to look at what will happen when I move to these new services. Do I get the behavior that I want? Is everything uninterrupted? And the upgrade of CA uh, Cognizant analytics in, in a containerous world is so important. And so we have uh, work to do, but I would like to call out that in the in architecture that I'll show you at, as a second to last slide of this deck, uh, over five uh, nodes or five servers in a cluster, when you upgrade Cognizant analytics, you're, you're essentially clicking a button that's going to bring down the services and bring up the services with the new version. Of course, there's work to be done behind that, where you still have to deploy the new version of software onto the Cloud Packer data or OpenShift cluster. Um, but that's simply a matter of going, very similar to going to um, Passport Advantage, right? It's just in, in the new world, in this world, you're running a script with a user ID and an API key and, a, and an ID and you're going to our repository and you're sucking down the containers and everything needed for Cognos Analytics and it's being imported into the OpenShift registry, your local registry, and then it's available uh, for you on the platform. But, but this is a really exciting, uh, and even the deployment of Cognos Analytics, which will fly through in a minute, we're at 27 minutes. Um, so all JDBC drivers now, uh, we bundle uh, um, I think it's 12, and I'm embarrassed that I can't remember right now. It's either 11 or 12 JDBC files are now bundled with Cloud Platform for Data Cognizant Analytics, so that they're already the most recent drivers are already uh, available for. Uh, I think it's 11 of uh, you know our most used data sources. They're there already for you to use. And of course, you have the ability to upload any additional JDBC driver you need, perhaps a different version. All SSL data sources are supported. This was a big one for us to get through. And then of course, a huge one was uh, SDK support. It took a lot of time, a lot of testing um, to get that done. We're also deploying now an OpenShift 4.5 and 4.6, which again is really exciting. And at the, uh, uh, the new release, of course, is uh, is OpenShift, Red Hat OpenShift 4.6. Um, Watson Cult Knowledge Catalog integration, again, um, uh, with 11.2, we access these through what's called platform connections that I'll show you in a few minutes, and Watson Studio integration. So all of these were, were things that we've done to date um, that 
are really getting our, our, our customers excited as I'm talking to them. Uh, fixed pack three will be available cloud pack for data uh, next month. So that if you were to go and download the containers into the, into the container repo repository, you would have cloud pack for, uh, you would have Cognos Analytics 11.1.7, a fixed pack two. Now, some of the things we're looking at short term uh, are Cognos Analytics 11.2, right? It's, it's released a month ago. Um, you saw a quick demo of it earlier, which was really nice. Uh, as you'll see when we jump into Cloud Pack for Data UI, it's very, very similar to Cognos Analytics, right? We spent a, a lot of development uh, time and effort on what we call carbonizing the products, right? So that all of the products have the same look and feel. And you'll see that as we, uh, as I show you Cloud Pack for Data, that the new Cognos Analytics and the Cloud Pack for Data UI look extremely similar so that your users understand where things are just intuitively. They're, they're just there no matter which application they're, they're deploying to. Um, we have a serious investment in containerization, right? And I'll show you at the end, we've taken some big strides forward in taking away our application tier and containerizing it for the most high value assets we could internally, but we still have a lot of work to do uh, in this area. And um, the application that we deploy today um, is scalable, is resilient, um, but we have to be more cloud friendly. Right? We can have large containers that don't scale fast. So th these are areas that we're looking at. Uh, existing mobile and new mobile, again, will be available um, as the year, as the rest of this year uh, progresses. We, Again, on the right hand side, these are more integration with the platform itself and, and platform services where the equivalent of Cognos Analytics data sources get created. And we don't want people creating a data source connection in a platform service and then a data source connection in Cognos Analytics. These need to be reusable between the two. And if I'm a Cognos Analytics user with access, with the proper access to Cloud Pack for Data, so user, um, or above, and I search for assets in Cognos Analytics, I want to be able to find them if they reside, like for instance, if a connection that meets my requirements uh, is found in Cloud Pack for Data, I want that exposed in the Cognos search and vice versa. If I'm in Cloud Pack for Data, I want to be able to do the same. Um, and then, you know, there's other integration points. I just named one here, upload JDBC file. Well, today uh, you can upload your JDBC files. It's a script that you run from the server and it picks up the JDBC file and it deploys for you. But Cloud Pack for Data UI has an upload JDBC facility. So we just want to better integrate as we go through the rest of this year with some of these uh, high value uh, platform integration points and functionality points that make sense for Cognos Analytics users. Sorry. Cognos Analytics administrators, not users. Um, so uh, before we move on to the uh, demo, you know, I'd like to always finish this slide because it sort of summarizes Cognos Analytics and Cloud Pack for Data. And that is really investing in a modern containerized platform uh, application. And that's where we are going. And we're not done that journey, but um, ready for you now. We're ready for your production workloads now. Um, and the investment in the containerized, plat uh, containerized Cognos Analytics is moving forward. Saving time with easy installation, maintenance, and upgrades. I can't stress this bubble, this circle enough. Um, as you're going to see today, unfortunately via slides because of time, but you're deploying Cognos Analytics with three clicks. You're selecting five things and um, clicking three buttons, and you're deploying Cognos Analytics via Kubernetes over a wide whether your cluster has a hundred servers or five worker nodes or a hundred worker nodes. Kubernetes is deploying Cognos Analytics in in literally in under thirty minutes with no configuration from you. Um, and then of course scalability. Why do we want containers? Resiliency. Um, scalability, not only scale out, right? Scale wide, I need uh, a significant workload because it's the end of the month. Well, I scale up my report servers to handle requests or I 
scale up my data set for upload files or graphic servers, wherever the case may be, but scale up too. And then of course, scale back in so that you don't have infrastructure sitting around idle waiting for load. And then of course, you know, being part of the platform, being part of the integrated data and AI platform, which is cloud path for data. This en enables you to take advantage and deploy and provision new services as you need them, right? Watson Knowledge Catalog, Watson Studio, Data Stage, Data Virtualization, DB2, to Warehouse. You know, the, the list is endless. And these are IBM cartridges. There are a whole other list of, of other vendor and partner cartridges with additional functionality that are available to you. Now I'm gonna fly through, we have 10 minutes left. So I'm gonna fly through what it looks like to provision Cognos Analytics on Cloud Pack for Data. And then I'm gonna jump into um, actually showing you Cloud Pack for Data um, just because um, of, of time. But you know we're launching into Cloud Pack for Data here. Uh, we go into that thing that I continue to make reference to called Platform Connections under, again, the hamburger menu at the top left of your screen, right? The hamburger menu, just like the new hamburger menu um, that we saw in the earlier demo. And you connect your, you create your connections in here. Here I've created my content store connection. I would also have to create my audit store connection in here. You can see the JDBC drivers tab at the top in the center. Right? We haven't taken advantage of that yet, but as I showed you, that's an investment area. Here is the primary page for Cloud Path for Data. This is where all the work begins, but everything uh, management wide is under the Cloud Path for Data. And when it comes to user management, you can see at the top right, we have configure LDAP. Well, you no longer configuring an LDAP in Cognos Analytics because this is a platform level LDAP, right? This is your corporate directory server. Cognos Analytics is just one of the applications that are gonna to connect to it. So you configure these things now at the platform level, the same with notification, SMTP services. These are things that get done at the platform level. Now you can see under my hamburger menu, I, at the bottom left, or sorry, near the bottom left, I've, I've highlighted the services catalog. So these are the applications that are available to you to be provisioned, meaning sucked down from our repository, the container sucked down and inserted into yours so that they can be provisioned later. And we're gonna focus on uh, analytics and you can see Cognos Analytics. Now, at a pre-deployment stage, so before I had deployed Cognos Analytics um, containers from the IBM repository to your repository, the tile simply said IBM and premium, right? It says available, meaning I've already deployed the application and the Cognos Analytics containers are available in my repository. So I click on the top right, the provision instance. I'm gonna choose a shared volume storage. This is decided by your OpenShift administrator. So you'll have a list under here of things. You're gonna choose the plan. Today, we have four plans, four plans, a fixed plan, a small, a medium, and a large. And we have a deck that shows different user loads reporting, uh, dashboarding um, that fit into those plans. You're gonna click next. You're going to choose your a content store. Again, the content store is still owned and managed by you. So if you have a, a database farm, if you have, you know, um, full high availability set up on your database, we want you to take advantage of those. Lower in the list, you would choose your audit store connection. You're going to hit next. You're going to get a summary of what it is you're choosing. And you'll get a, actually, this was an old screen. I apologize. You get a newer screen. Um, it says approximately 30 minutes and the approximately 30 minutes is simply the longest time we've seen, right? It really depends on the power of your cluster, right? And the nodes that are underneath it. Um, after that, and I'm going to show you the in-between stage of this, but you launch into Cognos Analytics. And as I said, it is the same. Of course, this is 11.1.7 because this is a 11.1.7 instance. Um, and we don't have 11.2 available yet, but you're automatically logged in. And I'm gonna show you that at the end. And then lastly, before I jump, because I've spoken too much now, is what I was saying in 30 minutes is think of your nodes as servers. And 
in Cognos Analytics, we just installed and brought up Cognos Analytics in anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes, let's say for the sake of argument, configured it, installed it, and configured it over five nodes. And the, the, what I want you to focus on in the next minute and a half is the baby blue at the bottom. So we have a web tier, an application tier, and a content manager tier. And you can see what we started to do is tear away pieces of the application tier, the graphic service on node three, the add-on service on node three, the content services on node four, the data set service, and the report service on node five. These no longer live in the um, application tier, which is in node two. Right, we've already containerized these parts of the product because these are the ones that we feel necessary today that need to be scaled out. Right, these are the ones that when load hits, these are the areas they're going to hit. And again, the artifact service is, is simply a new service that allows us the facility, the capability of uploading and installing your database certificates in all the nodes. Every report server um, uh, container that's required in that pod on node five is going to need access to that search. So we have to manage all of this for you. But in those five clicks or four clicks, in the one, two, three, four, five things you had to select, we've deployed Cognos Analytics for you, ready to go. Now, um, let me bring up, again, uh, where are we? Let me bring up Cloud Pack for Data. Sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. And again, uh, I'm not sure how, how it looks. There's a lot of black space on here, but um, it's because I'm on a very large monitor. Um, so again, everything is under the hamburger menu, just like we talked about before. Um, when it comes to manageability, again, you're doing these types of things, user management at the platform level. I've already launched a tab here. This is the platform connections that I was talking about previously, right? My content store connection, my connection to the audit store. These are all things that are defined at the cloud pack for data level. Now. No longer are they defined in Cognos Analytics. Configure your LDAP. So again, you're configuring security at the platform level so that everybody takes advantage of it. Um, so I guess lastly, what I will, will show you is, because um, I am running out of time, aren't I, is the um, services, sorry. Of course, everything's going to be slow on me. Maybe I can get there. Oh, there we go. So um, all of the services that I have deployed onto my application, uh, or have not deployed or want to deploy again. I just wanted to come here quickly to show you. Um, this is the list, right? These are the types of applications that are available. Again, not just IBM, but other applications, partner applications um, that are available to you, right? We can filter them by category as I had uh, in the screen captures, and you can see Cognos Analytics, and you can see it's changed from available in my screen capture to being enabled, which means it's actually ready to be used. Um, I can come to my instances and I can come from here and I can go open and I can launch into Cognos Analytics. Now, after I launch into Cognos Analytics, I want to show you one last thing. Uh, because Um, I want to show you that once it comes up, and I'm sorry, again, I'm remote at home. I launched this through Cloud Pack for Data, right? But we don't anticipate that the vast majority of your users are going to live and breathe in the Cloud Pack for Data UI, right? It's, it's not where your user is going to live. So what I wanted to show you was that your users are going to 
be given exactly what you give them today. You install, you configure, you create a gateway alias, and then you send out that alias, that URL to all of your users. And what happens? Now, of course, in my demo here, I haven't um, skinned or branded this, but, but you could change this. This page is fully skinnable, brandable, themable, whatever you want to call it, so that it doesn't need to say IBM Cloud Factory Data if you don't want it to. But after they hit the URL, the same way you do today, um, they go into Cognos Analytics. But they still access Cognos Analytics and all the features and all the functionality exactly the way they did the traditional install. Just think of it like your users don't call you and say, um, I want to access Cognos Analytics on Windows, or I want to access Cognos Analytics on Linux. Cognos Analytics and Cloud Factory Data to an end user is, is sort of irrelevant. It's Cognos Analytics. Cognos Analytics to your administrative team uh, is huge. Um, and with that, I think I'm at my 45 minutes hey, exactly. Hey. And Greg, you know, Jesse McDonald here. Thanks. Thanks again for taking us through that end to end. For everyone on the on the WebEx here, we'll be back at 245. But I'll, Greg, I'll ask you a few questions while I got you here. Sure. Um, so I've got a lot of my customers on this call right now. And you know, every time we go to help them with an upgrade, we're kind of having these these conversations. You know, does it make sense to do another VM kind of old school approach to the upgrade? Or is it time to look at, you know, Cognos Analytics on cloud, right? Uh, or Cognos Analytics on cloud pack for data. So uh, I will say I've got a good number of customers, you know, that are like a 100 user to 500 user type size. And um, seems like the Cognos Analytics on cloud has been kind of the more common migration option so far. Can you talk to like maybe sizing or 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 is it really not even sizing? Is it more of an infrastructure consideration for organization? So, 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 what are you seeing right now for customers that are successfully migrating to cloud back on Cognos? Are they really large customers, or is it, is it, you know, our enterprise architects that are driving their organization down, you know, an open shift direction, and then this comes along with it? Yeah, and and quite honestly, it's. Um... You know, it's a combination and it is, it is typically, um, you know, larger customers. Now, by larger customer, I don't mean number of users, right? I, number of users sort of becomes irrelevant in a containerized world. Um, Cognos Analytics um, will scale. Um, so it really, it really does come down to your organization, right? And, and if they are looking at an integrated data in the AI platform, and I said that through the through the presentation, then Cloud Pack for Data is what is what I think um, they need. And if they're looking at multiple services, including things like governance and data virtualization, again, one of the things I didn't talk about was you know data virtualization actually gives you access to data sources that Cognos doesn't support today. They have a whole conformance list that exceeds our own. Um, and because we connect to data virtualization as a, a DB2 connection, they can create connections to data sources Cognos doesn't support, give you access to new data sources. But really to answer the question, it really does come down to an organization. It comes down to where are they going? Um, some customers have pure SaaS models in mind. And as you know, Cognos Analytics on SaaS has been very, very, very successful. We have large customers and small customers moving to that. Um, you know, there may be customers that are not ready for true SaaS yet and um, more of a hybrid approach where they're going to have on premise infrastructure and maybe some public cloud infrastructure also. Again, Cloud Pack for Data and OpenShift is a perfect, perfect match um, um, for that. But, but in, I guess I would say that that we have customers of different sizes moving to Cloud Pack for Data, um, and typically, um, 
they're engaged with the platform as a whole. Right, they're 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 engaged with other services on the platform, not just Cognos Analytics. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. That that does. Thanks, thanks, Greg, and thanks for taking us through that. So, for everyone on the WebEx, the time is now two thirty-five. We will reconvene in ten minutes with uh, Matt Wallace uh, kicking off his customer presentation. So, all right. See everyone in.